Got it. Perfect. Um, all right. Awesome. Well, hi, folks um, who are here. My name is Morgan, and I'm our Education Program Director at YMCA Camp Campbell, um, and I'm excited to chat with you guys this evening um, and just give you the opportunity to ask questions um, and to learn more about what your students can expect from their outdoor science school experience um, here in this upcoming school year. Um, for this evening, what we'll do is I'll just kind of walk through some of the general, like this is what camp, uh, outdoor school is, um, this is the experience that your students will have, and kind of offer a snapshot of um, the time here, and then um, open the floor up for folks to ask any questions that you might have, um, and then I'll drop a video link in the chat um, so that if folks are interested in watching it, or if towards the end of the conversation we have time, um, we can play that for folks. It's about eight minutes long. And it's um, if you don't watch it, if we don't watch it here tonight, I definitely recommend you watch it with your students who will be coming um, because it does offer a really fun um, way to just kind of show, show them what they can expect. And I think it does a really good job of capturing um, the outdoor school experience in a way that words, words don't necessarily. So I'm going to drop that link in the chat right now. Um, and that just exists there and we can circle back to it towards the end. Um, if we, if we want slash if we have time, um, but yeah. So when your students arrive at outdoor school, they will get here on Tuesday morning and they will be greeted by our YMCA staff. Um, they will be welcomed to camp with games and songs and um, some really high energy, like, oh my gosh, we're all here. Um, and then they'll transition into an opening ceremony where we'll go over all of the rules and expectations with the group. Um, and then they will get broken down into their smaller field groups. Um, and the field groups are going to be composed of students um, from multiple different, uh, from multiple different schools and cabin groups. Um, and that's the, the, the crew that they'll be hiking with um, throughout the week and doing all of their learning alongside. Um, following opening ceremony and that kind of sorting process on Tuesday morning, um, the kids will roll right into lunch um, and they'll have lunch and have all sorts of fun and then shuffle their belongings over to their cabins. And from there, they'll go into their first field study of the week where they'll do some welcome activities, some games and adventures um, all together. On Tuesday evening after dinner, students will play um, a big welcome game that takes them on a scavenger hunt all over camp. Um, and then they'll kind of um, wrap that activity up and transition into bed um, where their lights will go off by 9.30. And They'll get a really good night's sleep and then we'll wake up on Wednesday and start the day with breakfast and do it all over again. Mm -hmm. um, the Wednesday and Thursday that kids are here, um, half the group does a picnic hike on Wednesday and the other half is has what we call their in-camp day. Um, so the picnic hike is um, a longer hike that the students go on while they're here at camp and it takes them out on trail for the entirety of the day. They pack their lunches, before they leave, they have a picnic, as the name would imply, out on trail um, with their field group. And it's really an immersive learning um, experience where the kids get to hike and um, be in the forest um, and uh, really have that moment alongside their friends as they challenge themselves physically, socially, um, and academically um, as they're moving through um, this trail adventure. Um, in total, uh, the picnic hike is about three miles long, um, but it's the education team takes it and stretches it um, in terms of there's lots of games, lots of teaching, um, lots of learning opportunities along the trail. For kids who are not hiking on Wednesday, um, the in-camp day is where they'll do a lot of their smaller lessons. So all students while they're here will do a forest ecology lesson, a fire ecology lesson, um, they'll visit our habitat house, our garden, they'll do some river study um, adventures, they'll do some team building um, and some shorter hikes. So on the in-camp day, kids will do a handful of those items. Um, and they'll also have um, the, that will also be when they go to the pool um, and have that experience with their group. 
Um, Wednesday night, the students participate in a night walk experience um, where they will go out after dinner um, with their field group, with their naturalist, and they will um, do a night walk in the forest and they'll learn all about night vision, how their eyes work, nocturnal animals, and all sorts of great adaptations that go alongside that. And then um, that concludes their Wednesday. Thursday, the activities switch. So if your student was in camp on Wednesday, they will be hiking, doing that picnic hike experience on Thursday and vice versa. Um, and then Thursday night, we close out the week with a campfire um, where the kids sing songs, uh, staff and students perform skits. Um, and we wrap up with a really, um, with a camp classic um, called Shooting Star. Um, that every student has, um, every student who comes through program hears um, on their Thursday night and before they get on the bus on Friday. On Friday morning, your students wake up, they, they get all of their items packed up, their cabins clean, they head to breakfast, and then go to their final field study um, as a group. And then we host a closing ceremony and we see them on their way. Um, we sing them out and wave them off um, to have a great rest of their school year. Um, so that's kind of a snapshot of what the week looks like. Um, I'll dig into a couple additional details with that. Um, so each day that your students are here, we Tuesday we serve lunch and dinner, and then Wednesday, Thursday is obviously breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Friday is breakfast. Um, so they'll eat um, all of their meals here at camp. Our kitchen does a phenomenal job um, catering to dietary restrictions. Um, Specialty diets, gluten-free, vegetarian, vegan, dairy-free, um, all of those great things. Um, and you can indicate your student's need for that in your health forms um, and in your parent packets. There's sections that you'll fill out, um, fill out to make sure that that gets communicated to us and so that we can communicate it to our kitchen team. Um, yeah. And then in addition to those three meals, um, students also always have access to fruit. Um, while they're here on site. And then naturalists also provide the students with a snack each afternoon, um, kind of during that field, that afternoon field study block. Um, they'll take out a trail mix or um, some sort of like bar situation. Um, everything here at camp is nut free. We're a nut free facility for our student programs. Um, so if you have students who have nut allergies, um, you don't have to worry about that. Um, nothing we have here at camp is cooked with nuts um, or housed with nuts. Um, and I know that's a really common allergen, so I just like to make sure that that gets communicated out as well. Um, when we think about allergies too, that kind of opens the door to the conversation around uh, other medical needs and other medical things. Um, we have a full health office here on site, um, and our health office team is led by our registered nurse. Sean, who is not only a seasoned camp professional, but also um, joins us after working several years as an emergency room nurse. Um, so he is phenomenal and um, leads our team of EMTs and wilderness first responders um, just in the best way. Like in my time here at camp, like our health office is the strongest it's ever been. Um, and I have so much confidence in them. Um, our health office team will be responsible for managing any medications that you send up with your students. Um, so if your students take a daily medication um, for any reason, uh, you'll want to make sure that they continue taking that medication while they're here at camp. Um, so you'll send that up with your teachers. Um, there's all sorts of information on how to do that in your parent packet. The key piece is, though, that you send um, that with your teachers in its original packaging. Um, all medication does need to come up in the original packaging. It doesn't matter if it's um, Flintstone gummy vitamins or Adderall. It needs to be in its like in its prescription or its Costco bottle. Um, if it comes in something other than its original packaging, we legally cannot give it to your kids. Um, so please make sure if you're sending medication that it's coming in that original packaging. Um, our health office team has or our health office, um, which is then managed by our team, has over-the-counter medicine. So maybe your student gets headaches now and then, and they take Advil for those at home. You don't need to send Advil up with your students um, because we have Tylenol, ibuprofen, um, 
Pepto-Bismol, you name it, and we probably have it up here um, in terms of over-the-counter medications. In your parent packets, in your paperwork, you'll have, there's a section where you give us permission to give your students medication, um, and you'll have the ability to check those things off. So if your student comes into the health office and has a headache and says, I have a headache, and when I have a headache at home, my grown-ups give me, give me um, Advil, we can say, okay, well, let's make sure we're drinking water. We'll check your form and make sure your parent gave us permission to give you that Advil. We'll check their forms. Um, pending permission, we'll give them that medication. Um, and if you didn't give permission, we'll give you a call and we'll say, hey, we have your student here. This is what's going on. Um, we'd like to give them Advil or Tylenol or Benadryl um, for something. Can we get your permission? So you'll be looped in on all of the health decisions made about your student um, as things come up. Um, and the more information you give us ahead of time, the better we can support your kids. Um, yeah, our health office is also present at all of the meals. So they go up at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, and they are a layer of support for students who have dietary needs. They can help answer questions. They work really closely with our kitchen team um, and are just really, um, really helpful and really phenomenal in making sure all those needs are met as well. Um, the other team of people who work really closely with your students are our cabin leaders. Um, and our cabin leaders come to us through our high school volunteer program, which is run by our manager of volunteer services. Her name is Katie, and she's lovely. Um, but the cabin leaders are all folks who come up for a week, and they stay overnight in cabin with your students. Um, and they also join your students out on trail with the naturalists. Um, and cabin leaders arrive to the program on Monday. Um, and they undergo about 12 hours of intensive training where they talk about everything from homesickness to child abuse prevention um, to how to play gaga ball. And um, if you can think of it as something important that the adults um, or the responsible parties for your kids should know, um, they are going over it on Monday. It's such a great training and such a great opportunity for these folks to learn. And then we have an entire department here called our resident life team that's dedicated to supporting those volunteers and supporting your students throughout the week um, when they're in the cabin, if they're out on trail and need a little extra love. Um, our unit leaders and youth program specialists are um, just a radio call away. Um, all of our cabin leaders participate in the Monday training. Um, and before they can even begin training on Monday, they have to have completed a reference check and if they are in high school, they have to have permission from their administration administrators, so their principals, et cetera, and then all of their classroom teachers to be up here. Um, anyone who is volunteering and over the age of 18, so when we have college students come volunteer, um, all of those folks also undergo a reference check, but then they are not allowed to supervise or work with children until their fingerprints have cleared. So we do fingerprint all of our volunteers who are over the age of 18. Um, as well as that reference check. Um, so we have a lot of layers of safety um, in thinking about supporting your students um, in terms of who's supervising them. Um, yeah, let me think what else. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry, it's been a minute since I've done a, an info session. Um, as we're coming to the end of the year, I just wanna make sure I've checked all of my boxes um, in terms. Uh, and then before we open the, the floor for questions, just some other questions that usually come up have to do with things like what should my student bring to camp? Um, what kind of luggage should they should they carry? Um, and I can tell you some things about that. Um, your parent packet will have a packing list um, in that. And that's something that you should sit down and look at with your student um, and work with them on what to bring to camp. Um, camp is, or yeah, Camp Campbell and Outdoor Science School, we are a cell phone, laptop, iPad free program. Um, so please do not send electronics with your students. Um, if your student brings electronics to the program, um, we will we will take them and we will give them to your, your classroom teachers um, to hang on to for the week. Um, your students will not be able to keep them. Um, so yeah, please don't send those things up to camp. Um, and in thinking about other things, maybe to leave at home, um, things that if they were to get lost or broken would be really upsetting to you or to your students 
when your students come to program, they will get dirty, they will get messy, they will be playing in the forest, they will be getting um, wet in the river and just having a really, really great time. Um, so making sure that your student knows that the clothes that they're packing, the shoes that they're wearing, that all of those things are in fact okay to get dirty um, can really help kids with their um, confidence in trying new things and having those experiences while they're here at camp. Um, if you want to send your student with a disposable camera um, or a digital camera, those are both great. Um, make sure those devices have their names on them. And again, um, more on the note of the digital cameras, if they were to get lost, it wouldn't be the end of the world because um, things do go missing in the woods. They do get lost on trail. Um, they do end up in other kids' bags sometimes because everyone brings the same disposable camera or the same um, $20 digital one from Target. So just helping make sure your student has their things labeled and they know what they brought to camp. Um, the best way that you can help set your student up for success in packing is to have them help you pack. Um, they should know what they brought to camp. They should know how everything fit in their bag. Um, and they should be able to carry their luggage items um, because that is all something that they are going to need to do on Friday morning. Um, they should be able to put their shoes and their socks and their sleeping bag all back in the containers that they came in <laughs> um, so that they can get them all home and onto the bus on, um, on Friday morning. So that's all really, um, really great independence building for your students. Um, while your students are here at camp, um, from, from our lens, no news is good news. If you don't hear from us, your student is having a great time. Um, there will be anywhere from 180 to 200 students here during the week. Um, and if your, your student isn't struggling, um, we aren't going to call or email you. Um, you should just assume that they're having the best week ever, and you're going to hear all about it when they get home. If your student is having a hard time, we won't keep that a secret from you. We'll be working with your teachers. We'll be working, um, if it comes to it, we'll be working with you to help set your student up for success. Um, and a lot of the work that you do with your student leading up to their camp experience will help set them up for success. So helping build that confidence in them, letting them know that you are really excited for them to have this opportunity. You are really proud of them for embarking on this opportunity. All of that language at home will help set your student up for success. Um, because even if they have a moment where they're homesick or they have a moment where they're feeling nervous, our staff can say, but yeah, were your parents excited for you to come to camp? And they will say, yeah, you know, they were, and they said that they knew I could do this. And then we can say, well, they believe in you, so you should believe in you. And we can really help hype them up um, and get them through their time here at camp um, and through those kind of first hiccups of homesickness as they start to bubble up, because that's normal and natural. Um, and it'll be normal and natural for you as well while your kids are here to feel those things, to miss them and to wonder how they're doing. Um, but that's, that's one of the beautiful things about this experience is they're here with a community of kids that they know, with adults you trust from their school, and um, they're, they're only here for a couple days. Um, so it's a really great dipping, dipping toes into the pool of independence, if you will. Um, yeah, I think, it's, I think at this point, I've kind of shared or downloaded a lot of the information that I have. Um, I can answer any questions that folks have, um, and then we can kind of touch base and go from there. Um, I found the best way for folks to ask questions um, is to type them into the chat, the meeting chat box, and then as those questions pop up, I can answer them. Um, and if parents on the call don't have any questions, um, your your team who set up this call, I think, had collected a few and maybe have a few that they've gotten in general as well, um, so we can go over over all of those. Um, but yeah, the, the floor is open. Um, Thank you so much, Morgan. Um, I know a of bunch course. of people came in a little bit after we started, um, so I just want to introduce you again. This is Morgan Bowman. Is that how you say your last name? Um, it she, is, yeah. She's one of the directors of Camp Campbell, um, and she just gave us a big overview of camp, uh, I'm sorry, of the Outdoor Science School. Um, <laughs> if you missed the beginning, we are recording this. We will uh, share the recording with everybody. Um, yeah, so welcome. And yes, please uh, drop questions in the chat box.
Yeah, so um, this first question is, will Maya Lynn bunk with other schools? Um, and yeah, so a big part of our program um, that we've been able to return to at this year um, since COVID is um, the connecting other schools with each other. Um, so there will be other schools who are up here with your school um, and your students will mix with them. Um, and yeah, part of the reason we do that is to give kids a chance to meet people from different communities and different um, backgrounds. And um, yeah, your teachers will help facilitate a um, kind of a buddy system for your students. So they will be placed with students from Myelin who they know, who they were excited to be partnered up with. Um, and then they'll be matched with kids from other schools and from your school community um, to kind of build those cabin and field groups. Um, submitted by a parent earlier, what are the sleeping arrangements? Do they pick roommates or are they assigned by teacher? So that's actually um, up to your school and um, every school does it a little bit differently. Um, so Myelin will, you'll submit a, um, what we call the buddy list to us when you do your paperwork. Um, and so students can um, choose, uh, so students can choose buddies um, based on, um, it, every school does it a little bit differently. So like, for example, the school that was here this week, they had their kids list like four people they would be really excited to be in a cabin with. And then they matched up those students in groups of two, three, or four. And then they sent us those groupings and then we placed those groupings. Um, sometimes students pick other students who they would be really excited to be in a cabin with, but wouldn't make good choices with. Um, so teachers will look at that and say, yeah, no. <laughs> you're not going to be together. Um, and they'll also let us know things like that. Um, so if there's um, concerns like that, definitely chat with your teachers about that. Um, but your teachers um, will be a really big part of that. Um, it looks like we've got another question about bunks and then something about snacks and poison oak. So I'm going to do this one about bunks and then I'll circle back to poison oak and snacks. Um, is it only kids bunking together or are volunteers also sleeping in the same room? So volunteers will be sleeping in the cabins with the students. They are the supervision. So they will be those leaders who are making sure that kids are getting to bed on time, um, who are available in the night if there is something that comes up. Maybe a student has a nightmare, um, has a bathroom accident. Um, the volunteers will be in the cabin um, with the students um, as that supervision. And then in the larger um, village space, um, at least one of the cabins, usually two or three based on staffing, will also ha will have a volunteer and a youth program specialist, which is a staff position. And the youth program specialist will have a radio. So the staff member is available to help if something's maybe more emergent, um, but they will also have the radio so that they can get a unit leader, program director, or someone from the health department in the middle of the night if necessary. Um, yeah. And then um, regarding the are students allowed to bring their own snacks question, we ask that unless your student has um, a, uh, a diet, like a really severe dietary or maybe a sensory issue um, or um, medical, so like uh, blood sugar, diabetes, something like that that you do not send them with any snacks um, for the sake of allergies, for the sake of um, keeping critters out of the cabins. Um, we ask that students do not bring food from home. And if there are students who need to bring food from home for one of those aforementioned reasons, that's something that we ask it gets communicated ahead of time and it's something that is coordinated with us and with the classroom teachers. So that if there's a conversation had about it, um, your teachers are in the loop, our health office is in the loop, um, and we're all available to support that student. Um, if And then the question about poison oak, if a student touches poison oak and has a reaction, we have all sorts of creams and balms and all of the poison oak stuff that you could possibly hope for your student um, to have access to in the health office. Um, a big part of our learning piece is teaching kids about poison oak on the first day. Um, leaves of three, let it be. They look like badly drawn clouds. Um, the naturalist team really focused on pointing it out as soon as they see it and talking to kids about not touching it. 
Um, and then if students do come into contact with it, because life happens when you're in the forest, um, they can go to the health office and get um, tech new soap, which is the kind of special poison oak, poison ivy soap um, that you use with cold water to wash that oil off initially. Um, and then we'll keep an eye on it for reaction. If your student reacts really poorly to poison oak and they know they react poorly and you know they react poorly, um, indicating that on their health form can be really helpful um, because the naturalist will really, really focus in on like, hey, friend, <laughs> like, you know, I know, everyone knows that you're gonna puff up like a like a pom-pom if you touch this plant, this is the plant you're not touching. Um, so we'll work with them on that. Um, my, uh, my child is allergic to nuts and has an EpiPen. What's the best way to bring it? If it ends up not being used, will they return to my child to bring back home? Um, so if your student has an EpiPen or an inhaler or any other emergency medication, you are still going to fill out all of the paperwork for a normal medication um, in your parent packet. Um, and you will package that up and send it to camp as a medication with your teachers. Our health office team will log all of the medications that come to camp in, and then they will um, they will bring those to meals, et cetera. Um, we return emergency and emergency use inhalers to the students to carry with them on their person, um, so that they are in, um, so that those inhalers are on the kids um, and always accessible to them. For the EpiPens, um, they come to every meal with the health office team, and then they will go out on trail with the naturalist. Um, if you want um, the EpiPen to be in the cabin overnight with your student, that's something that you'll connect with our health office about, but there's no food in the cabins. Um, so we've not had an instance ever um, in my time here where an EpiPen has been needed in the cabin. Um, so there's lots of layers of supporting that, but those are things that we can um, connect with, uh, can, you can connect with our health office about directly as it relates to your student specific needs. Um, and for this question, we are a nut free facility. Um, so the likelihood of encountering nuts is really, really low. Um, all medications will be returned by our health office team to your teachers on Friday. Um, so your teachers will then get all of the medications back and they will bring them all to school and then they will return the medications to you when they return your student to you as well. <laughs> um, and that's on medicine. The um, the next question that got typed in is asking, are there any rules in place so that a single child and volunteer cannot be alone together? And the answer is yes. And beyond that, there are rules in place that say that students are not alone one on one with each other and staff is not alone one on one with students. Here at Camp Campbell, we operate under a rule system that we like to call the TREDI rule. TREDI stands for a three person buddy. So there are always three or more people in a, in a visual space. Um, if a student needs to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, um, for example, maybe they're feeling really homesick or they're feeling really vulnerable or there's a bullying situation, the staff or volunteer will have that conversation with the student in an open air space where they are in what's called a visual treaty, which says that another, um, another adult is the person who is um, also able to observe that conversation and have that conversation. Um, everybody who works in our program goes through um, a child abuse prevention training. We call it child protection training, CPT. Um, and when I say everybody, I mean everybody, our kitchen staff, our maintenance staff, our volunteers, our program staff. So this is an expectation and a rule across the board. Um, and there is a really strong culture of if you see something, say something and insert yourself into conversation. So if I were to see somebody just like sitting with a kid talking and there's no one else around, I'm gonna go interrupt that conversation and check in. Um, and yeah, it's something that we take really seriously. The safety of your of your children um, is something that we take really, really seriously. Um, and our study rule is um, just one of the many layers that we have to um, ensure those safety pieces. Um, I think, yeah, that was all the questions that got typed in so far. Um, are there any other questions that folks have on their minds? 
um, tick checks. Um, yeah, we do those. Well, we don't. We teach your kids how to do them. Um, and your students, um, after they get back from hikes, will check themselves through ticks. We'll talk about um, how when you take a shower, um, which kids get a chance to shower um, every day while they're here at camp. Um, we have morning showers and afternoon, evening-ish times. It's like from five to six showers. Um, and naturalists will talk about ticks and how to um, be aware of ticks and where ticks like to hang out on your body. And then if your student encounters a tick on themselves, um, they will go to the health office. Um, our health office team will remove that tick. Um, and then they will put the tick in a bag. Um, they will seal that bag. They will staple a letter to the bag informing you as the parent that your student got a tick while they were here at camp. Um, and then you get that tick as a souvenir <laughs> with your kids so that if your student um, starts to react to the tick bite, if like the site starts to do weird things or they start to show um, funny symptoms, you can actually take the tick to the doctor and get it checked for lines. Um, so there's those layers as well. Um, we'll send the tick home and um, go from there. But yeah, we talk a lot about ticks, a lot about poison oak. Um, and they're all pieces that are part of having an outdoor school experience. Um, and they're all great learning opportunities, but we wanna make sure your kids are set up for success and kept safe in that regard. Um, yeah. And it was a really wet winter, so it's been a really ticky, ticky spring. Uh, <laughs> yeah, any other thoughts folks are having? The only bad thing about putting the questions in the chat is that you have to talk like the whole time. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> yeah, of course, no worries. Uh, um, I don't see any more questions in the chat. I wonder if now would be a good time to show the video you mentioned and if it's questions come up then through then we can continue to put them in the chat yeah absolutely um perfect so I um I was so parents I was explaining um when I got on that I've historically had kind of a tricky time just with our internet here at camp sharing screen sharing and having the video play successfully so I'm going to give it a shot um and if it doesn't work then um we can kind of go from there let me um, Morgan I actually I have it and I can show it oh, like perfect. reliable internet if that's helpful okay <laughs> let's do that then I think that sounds like a great plan <laughs> okay let me see hold on one sec I, I volunteered something and I didn't really have it set up hold on one sec <laughs> <laughs> no worries at all um, so while, um, while Eric is getting that video pulled up, I'll just um, share a little bit of an additional information about the video. So our, this video was produced pre-COVID, um, so there's a couple of things that have changed programmatically. Um, but overall, I think it captures, captures the experience that your students will have in a really, really great way. Um, and yeah, uh, I can highlight some of those program changes at the end as well um, after the video has played. Um, but sit back and enjoy it. I think, yeah, it does a really good job of highlighting the special piece that is our forest and our program. Um, and then Erica, I think you might need to unmute for us. Extraordinary environmental. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, I'll start over again. <laughs> I apologize, everyone. Tell me if this works. Welcome to YMCA Camp Campbell Outdoor Science School. At our beautiful camp among towering redwood trees in Boulder Creek, California, students gain an awareness of their role in the environment and increase their appreciation of the beauty of nature. Our staff bring science to life through an extraordinary environmental education experience for both students and teachers. Just as students go to the lab to study chemistry or to the gym for physical education, students need to experience the outdoors to learn about the world in which we live. At YMCA Camp Campbell Outdoor Science School, students can see, feel, hear, smell, and even taste nature in ways they can't in a classroom. Students learn quickly by participating in this hands-on environment and teachers see specific points in their school curriculum reinforced through inquiry-based lessons. 
At YMCA Camp Campbell, we believe that we all play a key role in creating a sustainable future. When students develop an appreciation and an understanding of nature, we ensure the well-being of our environment. This belief forms a strong foundation for our curriculum. We design lessons based on the next generation science standards to help students learn to identify and understand functioning ecosystems and to appreciate the natural resources that these ecosystems provide that are necessary for the survival of our planet. The lessons also help students develop an awareness of the interdependence that exists between humans and their living and non-living environments. These lessons are often student-led, with students being encouraged to ask questions and participate in discussions. Youth Development and Social Learning at YMCA Camp Campbell Outdoor Science School. Every week, students from different schools come together to share a place to live and learn. They'll take steps towards more independence as they are surrounded by friends and familiar faces. They will meet and interact with students from other schools. At Camp Campbell Outdoor Science School, students develop a cabin constitution, a list of rules and behaviors created by the students that everyone agrees to abide by in order to treat one another with respect while fostering a cabin environment based on teamwork and community. All students share responsibilities to keep the cabin a comfortable living space for everyone. Students also learn and practice social skills through eating together and sharing during meals, developing and performing skits, and volunteering to help with composting, cleanup times, and the leading of songs. Our cabin leaders are high school or college students in our volunteer leadership program who volunteer their time to share the outdoor science and educational experience with younger children. To participate in our volunteer leadership program, students must be in good academic standing and obtain permission from parents or teachers to attend. High school cabin leaders must also receive a positive reference from their teachers stating that they will be good role models for younger students. Training for cabin leaders includes activity planning, skills for working with younger students, and conflict resolution. Days at YMCA Camp Campbell Outdoor Science School are action-packed and students need time to unwind and process everything they have learned. Carnival is a great time to relax and have fun while reinforcing the scientific and social lessons learned that day. Cabin time is a chance for students to learn from their leaders and each other. Campers will also have an opportunity to participate in one traditional camp activity of their choice. Science Learning at YMCA Camp Campbell Outdoor Science School. Our science learning curriculum is based on the next generation science standards for 5th and 6th grade. These curricula are uniquely adapted by our naturalists for a hands-on learning experience in the outdoors. Students use their five senses to explore and experience the forest flora and fauna. During the river study, students will learn about the riparian community and the importance of maintaining watersheds. They learn about the endangered coho salmon, macroinvertebrates, and the effects of the rise and fall of the water level. Students will also have the opportunity to collect macroinvertebrates, conduct data collection, and measure aspects of water quality. For many of our students, the picnic hike is the longest hike that they have ever done. They feel a significant sense of accomplishment after summiting and looking down at the Redwood Forest. There they see spectacular views of the San Lorenzo Valley and the wonderful flora and fauna of the Chaparral which can't be found anywhere else. During the picnic hike, naturalists conduct lessons on adaptation, interdependence, community, and niches. They cover topics such as erosion, the change of habitation with elevation, and the characteristics of specific species. During the night hike, students take a moonlit walk in the woods where they will learn about nocturnal creatures, echolocation, and human night vision while identifying stars and constellations in the night sky. Healthy Living at YMCA Camp Campbell Outdoor Science School. Students participate in composting and recycling throughout their stay. They also learn how to maintain our garden while harvesting organic and healthy vegetables for their own meals at camp. Our friendly food service staff provides a variety of delicious and nutritious kid-friendly food. They also accommodate students with food allergies by providing gluten and dairy-free options as well as a vegetarian option at every meal. 
We eat family style in the dining hall with a full salad bar at lunch and dinner. All students will be given a tour on the first day of camp and will be introduced to the camp health team. Students with medications will meet individually with camp health staff to discuss when and where medication will be given. The health cottage is staffed 24 hours a day and is well stocked with over-the-counter medications that students may need. These medications will only be distributed if authorized on the student's health form. If necessary, emergency medical services can be at the camp within minutes. Our staff is CPR and first aid certified. They carry first aid kits and radios on all trails in the event that they need to contact our health supervisor. All staff wear name tags so students can easily identify them. Here at the Y, we focus on youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. We look forward to sharing this unique outdoor experience with you and your students at YMCA Camp Campbell Outdoor Science School. the hiking right now. That's your favorite thing? Mm-hmm. Um, I learned that hikes can be really fun. Yeah? Right, what's your favorite thing you've done this week? Um, probably the night walk. My yeah? Dad, I did not do that. So, um, I think that a lot of you have a lot of Gotta be the cabins. Yeah? What's something you learned this week? Um, that like, you can't touch these specific plants or else you'll get a rash. Very good. Like what? What's an example? Like poison oak. Too bad. What's something you learned this week? Uh, I just learned how to respect nature and just learning about how just simple effects can no! harm like a whole society of animals or something. And what's your favorite thing about science game? Everything basically. Yay! <laughs> awesome. Yay, wonderful. Thank you so much for um having that screener screen recording work. Um yeah, so that's our that's our video. Um, I I love it. It makes me smile. Um and it's just it's great. Um and if there's a nice job capturing the program, I would encourage you to show it to your students um before they come up and watch it with them. Um because yeah, I think it it's yeah it's just does, it does a nice job um giving kids a preview um i mentioned right before it started that this video was put together um before covid um, and we've seen a couple uh program changes since the pandemic um the two that i'll highlight just have to do with um actually some of those more recreation uh based pieces um in terms of um the activity block that was mentioned where we stated that kids get to choose one traditional camp activity to do, um, they actually get to choose two. Um, so there'll be two more like rec based um, activities for your students. Um, and then the other activity that was mentioned was called Carnival. Um, and that was our historic um, welcome activity on Tuesday night. Um, and we replaced it with the animal tracks game that I mentioned earlier. Um, as like a solution to not having groups mixed during COVID and Animal Tracks was just loved by teachers and by kids so much that we kept it. Um, so those are gonna be kind of your two um, differences from that video piece. Um, it looks like a couple other questions that came up and one of them has to do with, will fifth and sixth graders from Myelin bunk with sixth graders from other schools um, or just the same aged kids? And we do have, um, students just bunking with kids who are the same ages. So our field groups and our cabin groups are comprised of um, all fifth or all six, depending on um, the composition of the week. Um, and we do that, kids are at different points, social, emotionally, um, but also academically. We want your students to be learning things that pertain to them and their standards. Um, and then similarly with um, sixth graders, um, if they happen to be here that week, getting that opportunity as well. Um, there was, uh, to answer the question of can we come, um, we do have family camps, check us out online. Um, I, that's not my department, but I do know that people come up and they keep coming back. Um, so there are family programs. Um, and then mosquitoes are really dependent on the time of year that you're here um, and your own personal relationship with mosquitoes. Um, I would say mosquitoes are horrible and <laughs> you should send your student with bug spray. Um, but mosquitoes really like me, where I know some people don't have any issues with them at all. Um, 
if your students are here before, which I believe you guys are coming pretty early next year, um, but when if your students are here at the end of kind of summer, the fall, really before it started to cool off, um, I would anticipate mosquitoes being a part of the conversation, um, just based on how much rain and water we got this winter. Um, yeah. Uh, so yes, mosquitoes, there are lots of them here. Um, and then question about swimming activity. Um, yes, if you're, um, when your students are here, the pool will be open. Um, it is an outdoor pool. It is heated. Um, the students, I don't know the pool length. Um, off the top of my head, it's kind of a funny shape. Um, it looks like a big peanut. Um, and we don't use the deep end for outdoor science school. So the deepest point in the pool that your students will be is four and a half feet. All students will complete a swim check um, when they're here, which will be facilitated um, by staff. If students choose to not participate in the swim check or aren't able to complete the swim check, which is they swim the width of the pool and back, um, and then they float for a couple of seconds on their backs and then they hop out of the pool. Um, for us, if students choose not to or are unable to complete the swim check, they will be partnered up with an adult in the water who they have to stay within arm's reach of. Um, and they will also be given the option of a life jacket um, at the pool. So um, we've got tons of layers of safety with that as well. Um, I hope it goes without saying, um, we do also have trained lifeguards. Um, I hope most pools do. Um, and our lifeguards follow Red Cross um, training and ratios. Um, so for every 25 bodies in the pool, we have um, one guard active. Um, bathroom shower situation is located in the cabin. So all cabins have their own toilets, um, their own showers. There's two toilet stalls and two shower stalls in each cabin as well as, well as sinks and water bottle filling stations. The water slide is not open for outdoor science school, which is like a heartbreak for kids every week. Um, but the reason we don't open the water slide is because the kids only get an hour pool block. And um, there's a couple additional things with that. Um, to go down the slide, you have to be able to complete the swim check in full. Um, so for students who can't complete the swim check, um, it's just devastating to watch all their friends go down the slide. Um, and then students also tend to spend more time standing and waiting for the slide versus um, actually going down the slide. Um, or being in the water. So um, the slide is not open for outdoor science school, but it is open and um, during the summer we do weekend swim um, on Sunday afternoons for the community. Um, and the slide runs then as well. So come visit us. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, any other questions that folks have? Um, um, with Time is wake up and bedtime. And I didn't act, um, I might have touched on it super, super briefly, but I will um, circle back to it. So students um, wake up at seven um, and they have an hour in the morning to do showers and stuff in their cabin, excuse me, before breakfast. Um, breakfast is at eight, lunch is at 12.30, dinner is at six. Um, evening program starts at 7.30. Um, so whatever that evening activity is, and then we'll end around 8.50-ish. Um, they'll go back to their cabins at nine, um, and then bedtime is 9.30, so lights out at 9.30. Um, kids also have an hour in their cabin from five to six, which is when we do afternoon, evening showers um, for kids who maybe didn't shower in the morning. Um, and then they have cabin time as well, which is just a chance to catch their breath, hang out with their friends, um, and spend some time in those gorgeous cabins that you saw in the video. Yeah, of course. So much good information. Thank you, Morgan, so much. Um, and of course, I'm committed. so happy to be able to share. Yeah, I mentioned, at the start with Morgan, we're committed to ending by seven. So um, any, any oh, gosh. questions? Um, yeah, it looks like there's a question on how our kids with IEPs supported. Um, so students with IEPs are supported um, based on the needs that they have. And every IEP is different for every student because um, every student is different. So it really varies um, from student to student. 
Um, but if your student has an IEP, that's something that we um, we want to know about um, so that we can support your student. Um, and it's also something that we hope to connect with your teachers about um, before your students arrive. Um, students with um, IEPs for behavioral concerns or for learning concerns um, will be partnered up with staff who maybe have um, maybe been on who have been on. Sorry, let me back that up. Staff who have been on um, longer and have more experience in some of those areas, um, we're going to put them with some more seasoned folks. They'll also likely be placed in a cabin with one of our staff members versus a um, versus a high school volunteer um, to make sure that they're able to get that support. Um, and then if your school is in a position where they're able to send aides up, we don't charge for aides to come to program to support students. Um, they get to come and spend the week um, for free um, because we want your kids to be supported. So if your student um, needs an aid um, or qualifies for aid support and your school can send that person up, um, then that's definitely something that we can accommodate as well. And we're excited too, because we want your kids to come to camp and have the best experience. Um, question about how many people are in a cabin. So our cabins sleep between 14 and 18 people, um, depending on which village you're in. We have two villages. Um, on average, I would say there's um, 15 kids in a cabin um, with one to two adults. Um, so sometimes there's 12 with two cabin leaders in our smaller cabins, which sleep 14. Um, sometimes there's 16 with two adults in our cabin that sleeps 18. Sometimes there's 14 with two adults um, in our cabins that sleep, what's math? Uh, 14, uh, 14 with two in our cabins that sleep 16. Um, and then from there as well, um, if there's a cabin, maybe a week where we're competing with AP testing or prom or homecoming, um, and we're a little lower on volunteers. Um, we'll have staff who are in cabin um, who maybe don't need that extra support of having a co, um, and there will be one uh, one adult to your student ratio. Um, yes, there are tables assigned for meals, and tables are different than your field groups or your cabin groups, so you get to meet new people and have new friends and all of those things during meals as well. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks everyone for taking um, the time on a Wednesday to connect and to chat. Um, it was great answering questions. I know you're all headed um, into probably the end of your school year and your summer vacation, um, but we are always um, available to answer questions. Um, my email is um, something that um, both Taryn and Erica have, as well as my supervisor, his name is Nick. Um, and between the two of us, we um, are happy to answer any questions that come up for you this um, this summer. And Nick and I work the summer season as well, um, so we're always around. But yeah, definitely, um, yeah, definitely was great talking with you. Um, and I'm glad I could answer questions. And then last question, it looks like at the end, is just about day camp options. Um, so if you have a student who maybe um, can't stay overnight for some reason or is just wildly uncomfortable with staying overnight, um, we do support day campers. Um, that's something that you definitely need to have coordinated with your school ahead of time so that your teachers are in the loop, um, so that everyone is in the conversation. But essentially, students who are day campers, excuse me, get dropped off at um, breakfast, so between eight and nine, um, and then picked up. Um, we ask that they get picked up at dinner time. Um, the mountain roads up here can be dark and twisty, um, so we discourage parents from trying to drive them after, um, after night program. So we do ask that kids who are day camping get picked up at dinner. Um, but yeah, it's definitely an option for students who need it, and it's something that we can support further. Um, and yeah, uh, we've also had day campers this year who will ride the bus up with their with their group on Tuesday, get picked up Tuesday at dinner, um, and then similarly get dropped off at Friday breakfast and ride the bus home with their friends Friday afternoon. Um, so there's lots of ways that we can be flexible with that. Um, yeah, awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. It was so great to be here and to um, connect with everyone. Thank you, Morgan. And thank you everyone for coming. We know it's a crazy time of year, but some of the feedback we'd gotten about this year going in September was that it was a was kind of a lot of information, um, you know, right before and wanting more time to prepare. And so 
Um, thanks to the parents for showing up to this as well. <laughs> Awesome. Um, and then, yeah, it does look like we're wrapping up. But to answer the last question that popped in, how many schools are there at a time? I would honestly have to pull up the sheet and look to see how many schools will be here when Myelin is here next fall. Um, on average, we have about three schools up here at once, though. And if you have any other questions, feel free to email me um, and we'll track down answers for you. Um, good. Is that a good place to end, uh, Erica? Would you add anything? Um, I just would do our pitch of next, what the next steps are. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much, Morgan. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, of course. Give you giving us time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you guys for having me. Um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you in the fall. It's gonna be gonna be a great time. <laughs> yeah, a great evening. Yes. Thanks, Morgan. You probably don't have to stick around for our quick quick chat about next steps. But we appreciate your time. Awesome. Sounds good. Have a good night, you guys. Bye. You. Um, yeah, next steps are basically just finalizing fundraising, right? Our goal is that we'll be at about $385 per kid, um, get, given what we're on track to fundraise. And what we're fundraising for is so that anybody who can't afford that $385, that, that fundraising money is going toward that and buses and paying for our teachers. Um, so the next step is come to PJ Movie Night. If you missed um the hilarious thing that Gina and Nate did this morning at morning meeting I'm sorry but the kids are gonna love it Mario's being shown on Friday if you haven't signed up sign up um we've got a couple things next Friday if you're coming to the amp concert we'll be selling dinner meals like pizza chips and a drink kind of thing for ten dollars um fundraising for science camp and there's something else before the end of the school year, Erica. Over the summer, we're having a Chipotle There's Dine and Donate. Was that the last one? Yeah, Chipotle Dine and Donate. Yeah. And so the good news is that we're getting this all done so that when we're, you know, kind of fresh back from the school year, we're not having to do any more fundraising. And you can kind of just focus on filling out the paperwork that I think I'm supposed to get from Camp Campbell over the summer. And we'll have ready for everyone um, probably by the beginning of the year is what I'm guessing. Yeah. Do you know how much we need to raise still and how, or how much total do we need to raise and how much have we raised so far? That's a good question. I There's can find numbers. it. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, bu -bu -bum. I actually just was looking at this earlier. Okay. If everything goes according to plan with the buses, which has been a whole thing, um, it looks like we've raised $2,765. And oh, I need I need to do the math. Um, okay, we have to raise total seven thousand six hundred fifty. However, there's a PTA contribution, so someone do the maths for me. We need seven thousand six hundred fifty, and we've raised so far six thousand seven hundred and sixty-five. So six thousand seven hundred and we've yes. raised. Yes, I sh I guess I could do the math in the Google sheet right now. Let's see, minimum. <laughs> well, it's like less than a thousand we have to raise. Yeah, something like that. Um, and we raised twenty five hundred. Are you saying the twenty five hundred plus the contribution from the? Yeah, including the PTA contribution, we've raised six thousand seven hundred sixty five dollars. And we have to raise. Seventy five hundred. Right? You have to raise seven thousand six hundred and fifty. I'm so sorry. I could have. We're less than a thousand away. Yeah, it's less than a thousand. Yeah, we'll get um, there. And the more we fundraise, the less everyone's overall tuition is. And yeah. we are basing our financial aid on what was needed this year and what half of the folks who answered. I mean, only half our class answered the survey. So there could be surprises and financial aid needs. And I think Taryn actually. Um, applied for financial aid for our school as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. We haven't gotten like that back yet, but, we'll but we're, we're in good shape. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't have a good question. number for you all. No, that's a good question. Okay. Any other questions before we end? All right. Well, I'm off to a baseball game for my kiddo. So I'll see you, Emily, if you're so no, she got off. She's already there. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll hang out for a sec if anyone has questions. You go, Taryn. Taryn, thank you so much for all the work you've been doing on this. Thank you. All right, bye. Bye. Yeah, I can hang out for a sec if anyone has questions. Hi. Oh.
<laughs> I was gonna ask, is it uh, is it accessible the camp? Um, what it depends on what kind of access needs you're asking for. But my son is the kid in the motor chair, and it's accessible for him. Yeah, I was yeah I was thinking of Leo. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's my kiddo. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm I'm gonna actually follow. Wait, let me stop recording. Sorry, I don't mean.